After going back and rereading the Water 7 saga, I've come across two mind-blowing Nico Robin theories that completely change how I view her character. Even though Alabasta was 800 chapters before the Wano arc, Oda waited until the very end of Wano to finally reveal that Robin knew all along that the ancient weapon Pluton was located at Wano. But what if I told you there was another poneglyph that Robin had already read in the story? And just like her knowing Pluton was at Wano, Oda's also saving the big reveal of what was on this poneglyph. I believe Nico Robin has already read and learned the name of the ancient kingdom, and in this video, I'm going to show you the exact moment that proves this. And if you stay to the end of the video, we'll be tying everything in to solve an even bigger mystery, the true identity of Nico Robin's father. And if you're tired of hearing about Dragon being Robin's father, I can guarantee you, no, Luffy and Robin are not siblings. And no, it's also not Kuzan. That would just be weird. I mean, the guy hit on Robin at Long Ring Island. But before we dive in, make sure you subscribe to our channel if you're not already and hit that bell like Luffy and Skypea so you never miss our future One Piece videos. Honeyglyphs are essentially indestructible ancient stones with a secret text carved into them that reveals valuable knowledge of the past. Now when you think about the specific Ponyglyph inside the tree that is called the Tree of Knowledge, this is all very symbolic. It's no coincidence that this Ponyglyph which helped Clover to uncover the global conspiracy of the world government was the one that Oda chose to have hidden in this location. I'd argue that this knowledge connection makes Ohara's Ponyglyph one of the most important in the entire series. Now, while we don't know exactly what the Ponyglyph in the Tree of Knowledge said or how it was worded, we can look at Robin's Ohara flashback to get a better idea of what was written on the Ponyglyph. In chapter 395, it's revealed that there was a hidden Ponyglyph inside the library of Ohara that Clover and the other archaeologists were studying when the world government inspected the island. In this chapter, Clover states that thanks to that Ponyglyph and through studying many documents, documents, they were able to uncover the knowledge of the existence of an enormous ancient kingdom that's been erased from history. We also know that Clover had uncovered the name of the ancient kingdom because as he begins saying the name, the Gorosei make the call to silence him. So we can assume that this name alone is so important, such an important piece of knowledge to the Void Century mystery. We can assume that because while we learn about the existence of this kingdom and its immense power it once had, and even the war between the kingdom and the world government during the Void Century, which led to the kingdom's era erasure from history. The name is heavily teased but never given to us in the entire story. Oda blue balled us hard here, leaving us to speculate about this name for decades. Oda wasn't ready to give us the most important piece of knowledge. So I believe the big reveal tied to Ohara's Ponyglyph was the knowledge of the name of the ancient kingdom. I believe this Ponyglyph spoke about the great futuristic empire that once existed. Now you may be wondering, what does Nico Robin have to do with all this? Well, if you remember back to the Ohara flag, in chapter 392, Clover confirms that Nico Robin used her devil fruit powers to spy into the library's basement where they researched the Ponyglyph. Robin reveals that she's learned about the Void Century and it's her goal to solve this mystery. And Robin has shown us many times in the One Piece story that her devil fruit, the Hanahana Nomi, is a great tool for spying and useful for stealthful missions, as you might recently remember with the Geisha Robin spy mission during Wano. And one of Robin's personality traits is being nosy, mischievous, and eavesdropping, accruing information without anyone finding out. And this is all thanks to her devil fruit. In chapter 325, Robin admits to Chopper that this is a habit she's had since a little girl. She uses this while walking through Water 7 to pick up on valuable information without anyone noticing. And how does she get away with this? Well, it's because Nico Robin has the ability to sprout an ear or an eye within a certain distance of herself. For example, Oda shows us an example of this in chapter 486, in the aftermath of Zoro's nothing happened moments, where we get a scene where Sanji presses the Risky brothers privately to find out what happened between Zoro and Kuma while the Straw Hats were knocked out. And while they explain everything to Sanji, Nico Robin sprouts an ear nearby to eavesdrop on this conversation and find out the truth, without anyone noticing her. She's very <laughs> sneaky, and I think it's safe to say that the woman is even nosier than Usa. Anyways, I think you see my point in bringing this all up. Robin admits to Chopper that this habit comes from when she a kid and that's an exact reference to what we see with Clover and Robin speaking of this in chapter 392 as she now exposes herself for spying on their Ponyglyph studies. It's safe to say this was exactly how Nico Robin learned how to read Ponyglyphs in the first place as Ponyglyph research was just as dangerous and illegal as the research of the Void Century since they go hand in hand. A few chapters later in chapter 395, Robin even reveals to her mother that she's mastered the ability to read the Ponyglyphs and even Clover is surprised by this 
because Robin never told her this and because he assumed that she couldn't since she's only a young child. Then later on in Robin's flashback, we get a montage in chapter 398, which shows us various moments of her life after Ohara. And there's one panel that confirms Robin's ability to read ponyglyphs because she finds one and says, I found it, a ponyglyph implying that she could read them. But this brings up a bigger question of how did Nico Robin master the ability to read a ponyglyph at such a young age? And why was she so confident in her abilities to announce this to her mother? This all implies that in order to prove to herself that she could decipher the ancient language, Nico Robin would need some sort of final test. And as we know, Clover wasn't going to be the one to allow her or teach her to read the ponyglyph language because it was too dangerous for a child. So instead, it's heavily implied that Robin used the Ohara ponyglyph as the final test to prove to herself that she could read them and achieve her dream one day of solving the void century. So Robin one day, when no one's noticing, uses her devil fruit powers to read her first ponyglyph ever, which was the same ponyglyph that reveals the name of the ancient kingdom. Now the question is, does Nico Robin still remember what was written on that ponyglyph all those years ago? I mean, it was her first ponyglyph, she was only 8 years old, and it was the first time deciphering the language. And then you add in the fact that Vegapunk telling the story of Ohara and the entire incident makes her cry. So it's very possible that through her trauma, she's blocked out many of the memories from her childhood and even this moment of reading her very first ponyglyph. And if that's true, then she probably eventually forgot about what was exactly written. But on the other hand, Nico Robin may hold the ancient kingdom's name in the depths of her mind, as this was a very special moment for her dream. And so without Oda directly telling us, he may have already given us the clues to realize that Robin already knows the same name that Clover knew. Now, I wonder if the name of the ancient kingdom was ever written down by the scholars on the document after being deciphered straight from the ponyglyph. If the archaeologists were studying the ponyglyphs and creating their own documents filled with theories, you could assume that they maybe threw out a book into the lake with theories like the name of the ancient kingdom. And maybe in this book they even have more answers to other One Piece mysteries of the void century. A document full of Clover's many crazy theories which Vegapunk could have also ended up reading. And even if this isn't the case, Vegapunk came to many of the same conclusions as Clover, which means that Vegapunk may also know the name of the ancient kingdom. And now this brings up many different questions. First, does that mean that Dante Vegapunk can read the ponyglyphs. I mean, he was researching the same things that the Oharns were that allowed them to learn how to read. But more importantly, I'm sure you've all been wondering, what is the name of the Ancient Kingdom? I believe the Ancient Kingdom is a direct parallel to the Ancient Kingdom of Mu, which was an empire that worshipped the sun. We've made multiple videos on this already, so I'll leave them in the description, but essentially this makes me believe that the name of the Ancient Kingdom in One Piece could be Mu, or if not straight up Mu, as that could be too obvious, something relating to the sun. Something like Dawn Kingdom, Sun Kingdom, or another cool word that ties the word sun into it in some way. I mean, Lily even wrote in her letter to raise the flag that heralds the dawn, and with the sun representing freedom, hope, warmth, and joy with Luffy as the sun god Nika, we can definitely see how the mysteries of the Void Century are starting to all come together. Going back to that pony glyph from Ohara, I wonder, where is it now? Even the Buster Call wouldn't be enough to destroy it, so I think the Gorosei and the world government probably have it. Why would they not seize it during in this event. We know the world government is intrigued with the idea of resurrecting the ancient weapons from the Water 7 saga, and if you look at Mother Flame, this really does resemble an ancient weapon. So it would make sense that over the years, the world government has gotten their hands on a few ponyglyphs. But if they don't have the Oharan ponyglyph, I would also assume that maybe it's at Elbath or maybe with Monkey D. Dragon. Alright, so everything up to this point is very believable and logical, but now let's get crazy and have some fun here. These next few ideas are definitely out there, but let's put our tinfoil hat hats on and see if we can solve the many strange mysteries surrounding Nico Robin's parents. But first, if you enjoyed this video so far, make sure you like the video. Our goal is 5,000 likes, and if we reach it, I'll let you guys pick the next video on this channel. First, going back into Nico Robin's backstory, one thing that I always wanted to find out during her flashback was how she received her devil fruits. We've never seen the moment that Nico Robin ate it, and I always found it a bit strange that we didn't see it. Instead, from the very beginning of her flashback, Robin has already ate the fruit. In our podcast, I guess I told Dak Saki about how I believe that Nico Robin snuck into the library, read the ponyglyphs, and knows the name of the ancient kingdom. And he brought up something very interesting. He says he loves how she had the perfect fruit for this, where she was really the only person who could pull this off even at her young age. But then this got me thinking, is this simply Robin's fate? Or what if Olivia originally planned to eat Robin's fruit, which would help her evade the world government and acquire top secret information much easier? But instead, Robin ate it as a child similar to what we've seen with Luffy or Yamato. It could have been a 
an accident, or what if Nico Olivia intentionally left this fruit for Robin and intended for her to eat it so that Robin could achieve this feat with her powers when she was gone? I mean, we can see how proud and how happy Robin's mother is when Robin reveals that she can read the Poneglyphs. I get that it's an incredible feat for her daughter carrying on the will of the scholars, but in chapter 392, right after Clover figures out that Robin's been using her devil fruit to sneak around and peek in to study the void century without anyone else noticing, another scholar tells Clover she's totally following in her mother's footsteps. Now, this is most likely a reference to Olivia being an ambitious and smart archaeologist with a dream to solve the void century, just like Robin. But we could also imply this means Olivia is just as sneaky and nosy for top secret information as her daughter. And Olivia finally returns there compared again. Clover tells her that Robin is just like her when she was little, meaning Olivia was likely a nosy girl interested in the taboo subjects of the world. It's very likely that Olivia has mastered the ability to deceive and sneak around, the ability of espionage, the ability to always escape and survive without being caught, the natural ability to stealth her way through missions and evade the world government, similar to Robin always being on the run from the world government for her entire life. Spandine even says for six years, you and your cohorts have given us the slip. But what if I told you this runs even deeper in the family than we've ever realized? Not just with Robin and Olivia, but also Robin's father. Like I mentioned earlier, many people theorize that Kuzan could be Robin's father, but that would just be weird since he was hitting on Robin at Long Ring Island. Many fans like to say that Monkey D. Dragon is Robin's father, but I think that after Dragon told Kuma that a child is a parent's weakness, it wouldn't make much sense since we know that Dragon has intentionally pushed himself away from Luffy, but we know he's always been looking for Nico Robin. And if Robin really was Dragon's daughter, I feel like Dragon and Robin could have already spoken about this before and revealed it to Luffy by now. While I don't think that Dragon is her father, I do think it's possible that Dragon knew Olivia at one point and maybe even Nico Robin's father. You see, what if I told you there was one way that Nico Robin's father could tie to not only Dragon, but even Kuzan and even Jaguar D. Sao too. Essentially, every character who's playing a major significant role in Robin's story and helping her throughout the years. Yes, I believe Nico Robin's father was a former employee of the world government. And just like Nico Robin and Nico Olivia are both diving into forbidden conspiracies of the world government, I believe Nico Robin's father was Epstein for learning too much. In chapter 1018, during Jinbei's fight with Who's Who, Who's Who tells us a story of when he was in prison. He explains how there was a guard who laughed while telling him the stories of Nico. The guard told Who's Who to pray for the sun god who would free them and bring happiness. Now it's very ironic that the only reason Who's Who was even in prison was thanks to Shang stealing the Nika fruit in the first place. But Nika is also what inspired him to be free. Anyways, one day while Who's Who was in prison, the world government Epstein this random guard for simply telling stories of the legend. They disappeared this man and no one heard of him ever since. Now, am I saying that this random guard was Nico Robin's father? I guess it could be possible, but instead I think that Nico Robin's father mysteriously got disappeared just like this story. A man who would end up diving deep into the lost history of the world government that he worked for. A man whose curiosity would bring his downfall. There's something else that Vegapunk tells Robin in their conversation that we've always completely glanced over. He tells her that Professor Clover was arrested by the Marines and broke out 10 times from prison. And unless Clover has some secret power of a young Kaido, that has always been a crazy statement to me. I mean, when I think of Clover, I think of nothing but a history geek, a nerd, someone who's not the best fighter and not someone who can physically break himself out of prison 10 times like it's another day shopping for groceries. This has always made me ask, how was this even possible in the first place? I mean, 10 times? So I have two theories. The first theory is that Monkey D. Dragon helped Clover during some of these breakouts. In the same chapter, we find out that Monkey D. Dragon was once friends with the legendary archaeologist Professor Clover. I assume they shared many secrets of the world, Dragon telling him inside info on the Marines and the world government. And Clover told Dragon many more secrets about the origins of the world government and the void century he was researching. And now it's possible that while Dragon was a Marine, he helped Clover escape similar to Kuzan helping Robin many times. And maybe even after Dragon left the Marines, he'd occasionally still help out his old friend. This would be years before Dragon started the Revolutionary Army, so it was a moment where Dragon's heart was swaying. It seems Clover is a person who inspired Dragon's pad to change the world and take down the world government. And I made an entire video on Dragon recently, and I recommend you check this out if you want to hear more about Dragon and why I love his character and story so much. But while it is fun to think that Dragon broke out Clover 10 times from prison, it seems unlikely that Dragon helped him every single time without this being mentioned by Vegapunk or Dragon himself. And so this brings me back to Nico Robin's
Clinton's father, a man employed by the world government who learned way too much and helped Clover in a few of these prison breaks. This may even be how he met Nico Olivia, as it's possible that he also freed her while she was at some point imprisoned with Professor Clover. This would also be a cool twist to how Jack Gordy Sal also helped Olivia break out of prison because, I mean, who knows? Maybe he even knew Robin's father and was told the false story by the world government about how he disappeared. And this one single moment could have awakened him to the corruption and lies of the world government when he spoke to Olivia. In chapter 396, we see Jack Gordy Sal capture Olivia and he tells her to talk to him for a while. Obviously, she told him about the Void Century, the corruption, the ancient kingdom, and so much more that she discovered through her travels. But I like to believe that part of the story is also that she told him about why she went on this journey in the first place. It's implied that Olivia and her crew went out to honor her husband's wishes to fulfill his will. His dream most likely being to search for the answers and dive into the mysteries of the world that are so taboo even for people like the world government employees and marines to research. I mean, even Vegapunk, after all he's done to help the world government, isn't able to research these topics. I believe Robin's father dreamed to solve the Void Century one day and learn the truth of the organization that he once worked for. And so it's very possible that he died putting his life at risk and investigating the Ponyglyphs in some way. And if Olivia did tell Sal this story, it makes sense how quickly Sal switched up on the world government because it made him question the loyalties of the people that he puts his life on the line for while they manipulate the truth and massacre good people like Olivia and her colleagues and even her husband who works for him. And if this idea is true, I mean, who's to say Dragon didn't also know Robin's father at some point since we mentioned that even Dragon at one point was a Marine who was also wavering. It's just like Vegapunk told Dragon, the world government is a massive organization and within this are good and reasonable people. Of course, we can assume he's talking about Garp here, Dragon's father, but Robin's father would also fit in this narrative that Dragon and Vegapunk both believe. Dragon once said that he could find justice within the Marines, so that's why he left. And a conspiracy like Nico Robin's father would be a huge way to piss off someone like Dragon. And adding to this, it would be interesting if the end of Robin's father was the incident that made many of the other Marines and other world government employees first start to question everything, like Sal, Kuzon, and Dragon even before the Ohara incident. I don't know how much weight you want to put into using One Piece magazines as evidence, but in One Piece Magazine 9, it was stated that Nico Robin's father was a great historian, a man who read Ponyglyphs and was killed by the world government, which does align with my theory about him being disappeared by the world government. And this all brings me to one of the single most confusing and mysterious moments of the Ohara flashback that to this day has never been really answered or explained fully. During the flashbacks in chapter 395, there's a scene right after the Buster Call where Spandine says, bring that woman, there's one piece of information, only she knows. We cannot have her die here. And he's referring to Nico Olivia. You see, Nico Olivia was specifically chosen and ordered to be kept alive. Not Clover, not Sal. And this order most likely came from the Gorosei. Even though they're wiping out all of Ohara, the one person they want alive was Nico Olivia, which always raised so many questions in my mind. Why Olivia? What makes her so important and special? What does she know that none of the other people know? How could she specifically help the world government? And at first I thought it might be because they wanted to use her ability to read the Ponyglyphs so that they could locate the ancient weapons. But then I quickly realized it doesn't make sense because there's plenty of other people who could definitely read the Ponyglyphs and they could have easily enslaved these other archaeologists. This made me think that there has to be something much deeper than this. Something so much more specific to only her character. And that's where I began to think it could be something to do with Nico Robin's father. What if Nico Robin's father acquired a Ponyglyph that the world government specifically wanted and he hid the Ponyglyph in a perfect place before he was deleted? What if Nico Robin's father had information that could help the Gorosei access an ancient weapon like Pluton or Uranus? Or maybe he had dirt that could expose even with the Gorosei and he had this in some kind of book or notebook and they want to erase that. And so the reason they want to keep Nico Olivia alive is to interrogate her, torture, and find out the secrets that her husband left behind somewhere secret. But above all this, I think I found something even more mind-blowing that definitely blow your mind. It's clearly stated that the world government wanted Nico Olivia alive. So for years I've asked, what if she still is alive? And this next clip I'm going to show you might give you goosebumps. When the Straw Hats are exploring the Water 7 saga, we see a bunch of people wearing masks while traveling through the city. But Nami stops to focus intensely on one specific person who is alone passing by wearing a mask. Nami is staring at this mysterious person almost as if she somehow recognizes this person in an unexplainable way. Now in the manga this appears to be just a random citizen but in the anime if you pay close attention you'll notice some very recognizable 
noticeable features. First, the anime zooms in and focuses on one specific person out of all the mech citizens and we begin to notice they have white hair. And do you know who else has white hair? Of course, a character that was introduced in this same story, Nico Olivia. But it doesn't stop here because next we get an even closer look to her face and we can notice this person has big bright blue eyes. The exact same eyes that both Robin and Nico Olivia share. That dark greenish blue pupil with a blue ring around. But even above that, the big giveaway is the iconic sharp nose that both Nico Olivia and Nico Robin have. And this can't be Nico Robin because we noticed she was with Chopper during this time. So what is the chances that during the arc that Nico Robin entered Water 7, her mom also crossed paths with her? And is she somehow working with Cypher Pole or the word government undercover? Was she instead there just to see Nico Robin for the first time? Is she working for Kuzan who was also a huge character in the nearby area during this arc? I mean, maybe Kuzan saved her just like Nico Robin. You guys know what Rayleigh says, there are no coincidences in this world and with those three very recognizable facial features, I really do think this could be proof that Nico Robin's mother is somehow still alive. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and share this to help spread it out across the One Piece community. And if you want even more One Piece theories, click here for 17 insane One Piece theories.